Matt in Chicago, Illinois writes to me, Paul, thank you for your many videos on a variety of audio topics. They're always interesting and informative. Well, thank you. I appreciate you watching. I was intrigued recently by one of your videos discussing adding a 0.1 microfarad bypass cap to the main electrolytic power supply capacitors of a phase linear 400 amp and how much of a difference that it made. You stated using the capacitor on the main power supply is common practice for PS audio as well as the high-end audio industry today. You always spoke in a related video also spoke about using the same bypass techniques for electrolytic coupling caps. I understand why bypassing an electrolytic capacitor in the signal path with a small 0.1 film capacitor improves high frequency response and transparency, but I'm struggling to understand why bypassing an electrolytic in the power supply does the same thing. Um, it's a great question and one I don't know that I've ever really thought through a very clear answer on that. Capacitors in the power supply make a huge difference. Let me give you some examples. Well, first off, let's, let's for, for, you know, there's a lot of people who don't understand, don't even know what a power supply is. And let me just give you a brief explanation. So the power supply he's talking about takes the AC, the 60, 50 times a second, where the sine wave is going up and down from plus to minus 60 times a second in this country, this hemisphere, and goes from, you know, plus voltage to minus voltage like that. And it does that because it allows us to use what's known as a transformer to couple it. So the entire power grid runs at very high voltage, 20, 30, 40,000 volts running throughout the country. And it needs to get necked down to 120 volts, which is what runs your home. To do that, we put it through a transformer. Transformers are magnetically coupled devices. That magnetic field gets bigger and smaller, collapses, builds up to, that, to the tune of that 60 times a second, right? If you just had straight battery voltage, DC voltage, it would never get through a transformer and you would have to use a heat loss method like resistors to reduce that down. It's what Thomas Edison tried to do and lost out to uh, Nikola Tesla back in the wars of the electric wars back in the 1800s when they Edison wanted DC powering everything, which was a really bad idea. And Tesla wanted AC powering everything, which was a really good idea. But what Edison had correct, and Tesla you know, could see beyond all of that, is that all of this stuff, everything you see here, this, this console, this, these speakers, these television monitors for Octave Records, all of them run on DC, okay? And DC, is other than what a heater or your stove uh, at home it's all running on dc so we have to convert ac to dc and that's what the power supply does it transformer takes it from one voltage to another power supply capacitors are used to store energy and to smooth out that that won't want want into this okay so the quality of those capacitors that smooth out the voltage that's going up and down really make a huge difference. I'll give you an example real, real quick. In the new PMG Signature preamplifier, we spent a ton of money on parts for these big film capacitors, not electrolytics, rows and rows of these big giant film capacitors. And it sounds so much better than when we tried it with electrolytic capacitors, even bypassed capacitors. So what are the differences? Well, in a film capacitor, uh, the high frequency response is so much better. There, I mean, there's a hundred different reasons why a film capacitor is better than electrolytic. Normally they're not used in a power supply because they are expensive and they don't have a lot of capacitance. So uh, an electrolytic maybe this size can have 
thousands of microfarads where a, uh, a, a film cap this big can probably only have hundreds of microfarads. I suspect, getting back to his original question, why would it matter the quality of a capacitor? And part of it is uh, obviously the, um, the better that you can uh, create that DC voltage, the, the quicker that it can uh, uh, put that energy into the voltage regulator when it's demanded instantaneously. I mean, if you think about it, you've got music playing over here that is demanding current, let's say from a power amplifier, 20,000 times a second, 30,000 times, you know, from a lot of our stuff, and it's demanding it quickly. Um, the power supply needs to react. You have a, a regulator and then you have the storage over here. It needs to react as quickly as the signal. So one of the things that I've always thought, and I don't have any basis uh, in science to tell you that this is in fact true, but uh, what I suspect is because they are so tied together frequency-wise and that you are demanding power at high frequencies, it has to be able to supply it. And the better the capacitor with a film cap or however you're doing it, the, the uh, better chance it has of actually delivering a specified amount of AC or DC power to the circuit without having any kind of modulation or thing that we don't want, right? Because perfect power is, is like this. It never moves, but of course it's never perfect. So long-winded explanation. I apologize for that. I hope that gives you some sort of insight into why this all kind of works.